Last year, NVIDIA announced a ray tracing overdrive mode along with DLSS 3 for Cyberpunk 2077 and it finally gave us a preview of how the new ray tracing technique will affect the game visually as well as on the performance level. So let's take a look at how the fastest gaming CPU was able to handle it but before that make sure to subscribe to the channel to never miss the latest PC hardware stories like this in the future. Nvidia just released a video where it showcases a few examples of how the overdrive mode changes the visual quality of the game but when the actual gameplay footage was shown in action, the game suffers so badly that it can't even reach 20 FPS. Even though the game settings were put on ultra at 4K resolution, given that the system was using an RTX 4090, it's actually not looking possible to run the game smoothly with overdrive mode at 4K resolution. Only when DLSS 3 was turned on, the game started running with 100 plus FPS because DLSS introduces the frame generation technique which introduces fake frames in between the original ones. This means that if you were to run an RT Overdrive supported game in the future, you would require a higher end RTX 30 or 40 series GPU and the max you could go without the help of DLSS is 1080p resolution. Acknowledging the fact that playing on 1440p will require you to turn on DLSS 3, you would need an RTX 4070 or higher. This is because RT Overdrive completely changes how real-time ray tracing works in games. Previous RT mode only addressed ray trace shadows, reflections and global illuminations for a small number of light sources. But the overdrive mode utilizes the light properties from a virtually unlimited number of emissive sources that result in more realistic reflections and shadows. As you can see from the examples, the lighting looks more realistic in complex areas but it also has some weird effects on the textures. In this example, the grass loses somehow a lot of its textures when the overdrive mode is enabled. Maybe this is due to a bug or something but I think overdrive will definitely improve over time because it's just the beginning. The next interesting report is about Intel's Battlemage GPUs. While Alchemist will stay in the market for quite a while, Intel's Battlemage graphics cards are supposedly launching the next year and we now know who will be manufacturing its GPU dies. As per Taiwan's commercial times, TSMC has won large production orders from Intel and they will be making Battlemage GPU dies for the company. The report says that Battlemage GPUs will be using TSMC's 4 nanometer process node and the production is expected to start in the first half 2024. Not only that but the chip manufacturing giant will also be responsible for producing 3 nanometer process node dies for Intel Celestial GPUs that will launch in 2026. Considering that Intel also gave orders for Alchemist GPUs to TSMC, it looks like Intel is pretty much going as per its plan even after Raja Koduri left the company who served as the chief architect. This means that the GPU competition is about to go even more aggressive in the future and it should provide gamers with more affordable GPU options that currently AMD and Nvidia are not able to bring forth for the gamers. And finally we have AMD Ryzen 7800X 3D official reviews out. As expected the CPU has officially dethroned the Core i9-13900K CPU in gaming and there are a couple of interesting things to point out from the reviews. I personally prefer Tech Power Up more because it provides a more detailed review of every CPU and if we analyze the gaming performance of the CPU at 1440p and 4K resolutions, the CPU is able to outperform the i9 by a small margin in most games just like the 7950X 3D. But this is not the only best part about the CPU. If we analyze its thermals and power efficiency, it's far ahead of both 7950X 3D and the 13900K. In gaming tests, the 7800 XT doesn't even go past 65 degrees Celsius while the 7950 X3D stays around 75 and the i9 goes up to 87 degrees Celsius. The processor is even more impressive in power efficiency because it does a far better job by consuming just one third of the total power than that of the i9 13900K whether you consider the application or gaming tests. Of course the i9 is far ahead in productivity so if we stick to only gaming tests the power consumption of 7800X 3D does not even reach 50 watts in most titles while the 13900K easily reaches 150 watts and above. The only thing that I believe which is stopping the 7800X 3D to be the best value gaming CPU is its price of $450. If AMD reduces it to $400, it is going to sell like hotcakes. But considering what the CPU is putting forward even for this price, I think many enthusiast gamers are still going to opt for this CPU. At this point, it is clear that if you want the best possible gaming performance without going over $600, there is no need to go with the 7950X 3D because that CPU is not only very expensive but also loses to the i9-13900K when we take the price to performance ratio into consideration. 
Let me know what do you think about the 7800X3D in the comments below. Hit the like button if you found this video informative and subscribe for more regular stories like this. Also make sure to turn on the notifications if you want to get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you in the next one.